Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about Dr. Claire Weeks and her approach to healing anxiety. Dr. Claire Weeks, an Australian medical health practitioner, lived between 1903 and 1990, and she had some revolutionary ideas about treating anxiety that are still noted today for being ahead of their time. She was a strong believer in the mind-body connection, and she taught how to regain control over an anxious state of mind by coping with feelings of fear. You can see her short videos on YouTube, and so I think they would be fun for you to listen to. You can check those out, and I want you to check out her book on overcoming anxiety, specifically Hope and Help for Your Nerves, and I'll have a link to that book in the show notes. She also wrote a couple of other books that have helped many people overcome their anxiety. And in recent years, many new books about overcoming anxiety have been published. And to this day, every day, there's another new book coming out because we keep looking deeper into this, right? But Dr. Weeks's books, particularly Hope and Help for Your Nerves, are often recommended and have been widely read by our group members and my clients. And I highly recommend all of my listeners to check out Hope and Help for Your Nerves. It's an awesome book and will give you a great education on how you can cope with the feelings of fear. Claire Weeks, I am going to call her Claire maybe throughout this episode because I feel like I've spent enough time in her literature to be on a first name basis. She really distrusted the methods of psychoanalysis being used during her lifetime. And she looked for simpler explanations for anxiety that did not involve sifting through childhood to latch on to any event that could be blamed for the disorder, and then focusing all one's attention on changing beliefs and feelings surrounding the event, when the event might not have all of it does not have to do with the disorder. So the main principle of Dr. Claire Weeks, her anxiety theory are as follows. First off, she believed in anxiety as natural versus anxiety as a flaw or disability. Claire described people who suffered from anxiety disorders, including herself, as highly sensitized. This meant to her that they possessed a natural sensitivity to the world rather than necessarily having a traumatic past or flawed personality. I love that. And I especially love that she believed that they possessed a natural sensitivity. Pay attention. It's not all that of a problem as a flaw or disability. The other piece of her work that was important is habit change. Claire noted that highly sensitized people regularly engage in fear avoidance which she believed was an unnecessary habit. She also believed in the existence of destructive thought patterns. Addressing bad habits and destructive thought patterns were fundamental to her practice. These types of treatment were seen as refreshingly straightforward and simple. She also had a thing called the three pitfalls of anxiety. Claire noted that anxiety was cyclical in nature, consisting of three pitfalls that perpetuate it. These included, in her terms, sensitization, bewilderment, and fear. 
So let's look at those separately. Sensitization was what she considered a general state of the anxiety sufferer, in which the sympathetic nervous system is highly active and responsive, resulting in persistent nervousness. The second pitfall, which she called bewilderment, was a state of confusion and distress due to the general nervousness caused by sensitization. Now, I think that word bewilderment actually nails it, right? Just a feeling of being perplexed and confused or deeply and utterly confused. I think she nailed it with bewilderment. The third pitfall that she had was called fear. And this was believed by Claire to result from the discomfort caused by the two preceding pitfalls and eventually to be a reaction to the fear itself, forming a closed loop, or as we talk about it here, the fear adrenaline fear loop. Another principle that she had was acceptance versus rejection of panic. So this is the acceptance piece allowing the feelings of panic to occur within the body rather than constantly struggling to fight them. This was fundamental to Weeks's anxiety healing strategies. And she said, and I quote, what is known as nervous illness is no more than extreme emotional and mental fatigue usually begun and maintained by fear, end of quote. She also said, again, there's another quote, that anxiety is much, very much a condition of your attitude toward how you feel. But how you feel depends on how you think, on what you think. Because anxiety depends on what you think, you can recover. Thoughts that are keeping you anxious can be changed. In other words, your approach to your anxiety can be changed. And end of quote. So I have some more for you, but I want to thank today's sponsor first, and that is by Optimizers. And mending the anxious mind needs a healthy body, and your anxiety may need the second brain, the brain in your gut, to be nourished back to health. Your negative feelings could actually be caused by gut problems. 90% of your serotonin is created in your gut, and we all know how important that is. So let's nourish the body so that everything that the mind and brain need are available. If your gut health is off, then you're just not going to feel as happy and positive as you normally do. When you start taking care of your gut, you'll be amazed by how much better you feel. Here's how I recommend you begin to nourish your gut for better moods. Start taking Cogni Biotics, the breakthrough mood-enhancing formula made by Bioptimizers. This formula starts with a solid foundation of prebiotics and probiotics to support gut health and positive feelings in a safe and natural way. Cogni Biotics also includes 17 powerful brain herbs to enhance mood, manage stress, and improve memory. If you think about it, Cognibiotics is almost like two supplements in one because of how it supports your mood and brain health through two different channels. Cognibiotics comes with a full one-year guarantee, so I encourage you to try it risk-free and see for yourself how much better you feel. Simply go to www.cognibiotics.com slash anxiety coaches and use anxiety coaches 10 to receive 10% off any order. Again, that's cognibiotics.com slash anxiety coaches. Use anxiety coaches 10 for 10% off any order. That's C O G N I B I O T I C S dot com slash anxiety coaches. Thank you, by optimizers. So Claire Weeks also coined the term the anxiety trick, which works like this. She says it is behind most of the trouble people have with chronic anxiety. If you have struggled to overcome an anxiety disorder only to get disappointing results or even 
feel worse over time, you are being fooled again and again by the anxiety trick. With anxiety panic, people get afraid when they're not in danger. The struggle to protect themselves from fear leads them down the path of increasing trouble. That's the anxiety trick. It is very common and it happens all the time. And many people mistakenly blame themselves for it. Here's a more accurate and helpful way to understand this common and frustrating problem. If you have anxiety or panic disorder or agoraphobia, you keep getting tricked into believing that you're about to die, go crazy, or lose control of yourself. If you have specific phobia, like fear of getting into the elevator, you keep getting tricked into believing you're likely to have a panic attack. If you have generalized anxiety disorder, you keep getting tricked into believing that you're about to be driven mad by constant worrying. I hear this so often. I'm so afraid I'm going to go crazy. In each case, the episode of fear passes without the expected catastrophe. You're no worse for the wear, except that you're more worried about the next episode. The details seem different, but it's the same anxiety trick. The anxiety trick is this. You experience discomfort and get fooled into treating it like danger. What do we do when we're in danger? We have three things we can do. We can fight, flight, or freeze. If it looks weaker than me, I'll fight it. If it looks stronger than me, but slower, I can run away. And if it looks stronger and faster than me, I'll freeze in hope that it doesn't harm me. When people experience the fear of an anxiety or panic attack or a phobic encounter or an obsessive thought, they instinctively, as if you were built for it, treat it as a danger. They try to protect themselves with some variation of fight, flight, or freeze. People's natural instinct is to protect themselves, and that is what leads us to get tricked. If a person with panic disorder gets tricked into holding their breath and fleeing from the store or getting off the highway, leaving the theater or restaurant, Rather than shifting to deep, diaphragmatic belly breathing and staying there until the feelings pass. A person with generalized anxiety disorder gets tricked into trying to stop the unwanted what-ifs, just trying to stop thoughts, rather than accepting them and taking care of the present business as thoughts come and go. A person with social Phobia gets tricked into avoiding the party or hiding in the corner if he attends, rather than say hello to a stranger and see what happens. A person with OCD gets tricked into repeatedly washing his hands or returning home to check the stove, rather than accepting the intrusive thought of contamination and fire and returning his energies to the present activities at hand. A person with a dog phobia gets tricked into avoiding the feelings by avoiding all dogs, rather than spending time with a dog until the feelings pass. Why the trick works to keep people in the cycle. Let's talk about that. Because they took the protective steps and there was no catastrophe, right? You took these extra steps You left the restaurant or the theater, or you got off the highway, or you distracted from the unwanted thoughts, or you didn't go to the party, right? Or you went home to check the stove, and ah, voila, there was no fire because I went back to check the stove, right? So we tend to believe that these steps saved us from a catastrophe. 
This thought will make us worry more about the next time. It convinces us that we are terribly vulnerable and must constantly protect ourselves. People get through the experience because the experience isn't actually dangerous. But it's understandably hard for people to recognize that at the time, they're more likely to think that they just had a narrow escape. This leads people to redouble their protective steps, dig ourselves in deeper. We guess we do it over and over. It's becoming a big habit, and the cycle continues. It's the protective steps which actually maintain and strengthen the anxiety trick. If you think you just narrowly escaped a catastrophe because you had your cell phone with you or your water bottle or because you went back and checked the stove seven times or because you plugged in your iPod and distracted yourself with some music, then you're going to continue to feel vulnerable and you're going to get more stuck in the habit of protecting yourself using these means. This is where distractions are not working for you, as they can be adding to the idea that you are somehow protecting yourselves. Now, we do have times when distraction is necessary. We just need to flip into something else, and it can be helpful, but it's a double-edged sword because we don't want to become so distracted that the distraction becomes the thing that is keeping us in the cycle. Claire Weeks says, this is why my patients so often say, the harder I try, the worse it gets. If the harder you try, the worse it gets, then you should take another look at the methods you've been using. You've probably been tricked into trying to protect yourself against something that isn't dangerous and this makes you feel worse over time, end of quote. And that's why we say here all the time that discomfort is not dangerous. We get that confused. In this day and age, any discomfort sets off this feeling of danger, and that isn't true. We need to get clear on that. Now, Claire Weeks suggests the following four strategies to overcoming anxiety. And you've heard me say these many times, so if you're a longtime listener, this will be familiar. Face, accept, float, and let time pass. Now, this show has gone on long enough, and so I will go over these four strategies in more depth in episode 704. So be sure to come back and listen to a deeper understanding of face, accept, float, and let time pass. I hope this has been helpful for you. Reading her work, even after I had come out of the wormhole, was so helpful to me to just know that really, really, this is the way out. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to put out a personal invitation to those of you who would like to take your healing and your clearing of your anxiety panic to another level. If you are not someone who wants to join a group coaching program, you may be interested in joining in with me on Coaching One-on-One. You can learn more about that at the website, anxietycoachespodcast.com, and go to the one-on-one coaching page. Feel free to send me an email, anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com, with coaching in the subject, and I'll be sure to get back with you, and we'll take it from there. No need to have this drag on forever. And now for today's quote. You who are suffering and read this, turn your attention to the way you think, not to your feelings. Come to terms with your attitude, and your feelings will look after themselves. And that's from Claire Weeks. 
I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 